This is Barbara Slavin. It's June 17, 1998, and we're doing uh, another in our series of uh, interviews of Natick veterans. Uh, this uh, videotape will be put on file at the Morse Institute Library in Natick, Massachusetts. Uh, I'd like to ask you, sir, what your name is. Harry K. Mm -hmm. Sihon. Okay. How do you spell that? S-E-A-H-O-L-M. Okay. And what is your age? I'm 75. Mm -hmm. And your marital status? Uh, I'm a widower. Widower. Do you have any children? I have a son. Uh -huh. and two grandchildren. Two grand That's my next question. Yeah. Okay. And where were you born? I was born in Sweden. Okay. And where were you? When did you come here? How? In 1925. And you were raised where? In East Natick. East Natick. In uh, those days, what was the uh, East Natick like when you were growing up? <laughs> All dirt roads. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yes. Uh, it was. Uh, it was uh, well, completely strange to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I had. I didn't have any problem uh, uh, learning the language, but I have two older sisters who, they had a little bit of trouble uh, with the English uh, because they spoke only Swedish. Mm -hmm. And as a two-year-old, you can learn pretty quick oh, yeah. a new language. Uh, but uh, my father was a blacksmith, my mother a homemaker, and we, uh, I loved that mm -hmm. growing up, a new country, mm -hmm. it was great. You say your mother was a homemaker and your father was a blacksmith? My father was a blacksmith, yeah. And he worked in Natick? He worked in Wellesley. Wellesley? He worked for Deal. Oh, Deal. When they had horses and, mm -hmm. and uh, stuff. Can I ask you when and where you entered the military? Uh, October 4th, 1942. Uh, I, uh, I uh, enlisted in Boston and then we went to uh, Great Lakes uh, Naval Training Station for boot camp. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, why did you choose the Navy? Well, it was a, a spur of the moment uh, mm -hmm. a thing. There were me and uh, myself and two friends. We were walking along in Framingham, and one suggested, let's go into the Navy, Navy recruiting office. Mm -hmm. It was right there in downtown Framingham. So we went in, and we signed up. And my mother didn't appreciate it, really, <laughs> really not too much. But uh, it was pretty good. Uh, two of us went to uh, Great Lakes. The other one, he stayed in Boston because he was so tall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he, he stayed in Boston and operated between here and uh, Boston and uh, Newfoundland, where uh, the other fellow and I, we went to Great Lakes. And then he went off mm -hmm. somewhere and I went off. You say you, he stayed in Boston because he was so tall, what does that well, mean? Well, whatever the regulations were, uh, they wouldn't allow him to come to Great Lakes with us. So he stayed, he stayed in Boston, uh, stayed at the Fargo building, and uh, then he, uh, they transferred him back and forth between uh, uh, Argentia, Newfoundland and Boston. And that's where he spent most of his time, in, uh, in uh, Newfoundland. Did any of your family join the, the Navy? Uh, later, my two brothers uh, were both in the uh, Korean War. Mm -hmm. And where was your basic training? At Great Lakes, Illinois. Okay, that's right. And could you tell me about your training? Well, it was different. Yeah. I tell you, uh, we, we didn't have any bunks. We had hammocks. And uh, when we, uh, when the lights went out, there we uh, slept in those hammocks. And the first week, uh, boy, all during the night, you hear thump, 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 kids falling out of the, uh, yeah. out of the uh, hammocks because you had to uh, keep them up tight. And they were almost like a canoe. You had to be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> Did you develop any close friendships during basic training? Uh, yes. Uh, but uh, after we got out and... Uh, we, we had, a, after basic training, we had to leave, and then uh, we all went to different schools. I went to uh, uh, University of Minnesota, the machinist made school, and uh, others went to uh, Oklahoma, and others just went aboard ship. And did you have a, uh, what was your specialty in the Navy? 
I was an aviation machinist. Okay, and did you like it? I loved it. Anything you didn't like about it? No. It, got, it was dirty, right. but uh, it was good. I liked it. And can you tell me what an aviation machinist did? Well, there was, uh, they have, uh, they were, at that time, they were pretty much specialists. They had mm -hmm. uh, 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 fellows that were, their specialty was uh, instruments, mm -hmm. uh, hydraulics, you know, with the hydraulic landing gear. Right. Uh, uh, they had uh, carburetor specialists, uh, and then they had uh, uh, fellows like me, we did, uh, we did uh, engine changes and mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> what am I trying to say now? Uh, every, every 30 hours of operating time, uh, the, uh, the uh, engines had to go under a, uh, a uh, check. And there was a checklist you had to check mm -hmm. so many things every 30 operating hours. Could you tell me where you were first stationed? Uh, my first station overseas was Iceland. Iceland. And when were you sent there? Uh, that was 1943. 1943. I read uh, that the Reuben James was the first Navy vessel lost in World War II. Were, were you, uh, did that have an effect on the sailors? I think that was sunk by German U-boats. Do no. you remember that? No. Okay. You're, uh, when you were in Iceland, it seemed to be around the same time as the co uh, the convoy system we established to get the merchant uh, marines. Yes, uh, yes. Was that something uh, that you were aware of or part of in any way? Well, I've, we, we were aware of it, but right. uh, it didn't affect us at all. Okay. And uh, also, that, that time period was the time of the unrestricted submarine warfare. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the Germans mm -hmm. were conducting against yeah. us. Uh, were you uh, aware of the submarine war? Well, we were aware of uh, uh, that they were, uh, oh, I, I don't know how far away from the island of Iceland, but uh, they were around there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there were several sightings, but they never bothered us, and we had nothing to combat them with, right. not with the aircraft we had. Where were you in Iceland? Uh, just... Uh, just outside of uh, Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Was there a place in Iceland called Camp Snafu? Ever hear of that? A navy base. That had to been. That had to been army. We oh, were really? called. Uh, oh. We were. Uh, we were. Uh, uh, they called. We were the uh, fleet air facility. Fleet air facility. Okay. And it was a small, small outfit. In general, were you? Did you follow the, the, the Battle of the Pacific when you were there? Did you get a lot of news as to what was going uh, on in the Pacific? The, the only news we got, uh, got was uh, through uh, the newsletters right. each week. That uh, it was uh, mimeographed yeah. uh, copies, you know. So uh, we didn't get newspapers okay. unless unless some of the fellows had newspapers sent to them from home, but I never did. Were you able to, were you, through those newsletters, were you also able to follow the war in the Pacific and oh. other parts of Europe? Yeah, we followed, the, uh, they have, uh, gave us news of that, and uh, of the Pacific, and uh, all the sporting news, yeah. we did all of those things. <laughs> what kind of entertainment did they have for the soldiers in, <laughs> in Iceland? <laughs> well, we had, uh, we had a uh, beer hall. Yeah. We had a uh, a uh, movie hall where we uh, got all the uh, latest movies, and uh, I would I would I would go into the uh, I would go into the uh, movie hall early uh, because the uh, there's a fellow that uh, he had a uh, record player who he played all the music and he played uh, all the good big band stuff hmm. and I was a uh, uh, Glenn Miller was a favorite of mine, and uh, and uh, he played a lot of it, and I, I really enjoyed that. Did the USO ever go there? No. 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 What was a uh, typical day like when you were working? Well, the there was uh, uh, when I when when I uh, first got there, uh, it was. Um, about four hours of daylight and the rest darkness. Mm. And then during 
towards the summer, uh, it just reversed itself. How did you find that? I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah. In the winter time, you could uh, get a lot of get a catch up on a lot of reading. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, I did a lot of studying because uh, when I got to that base, uh, I hadn't been trained for, uh, the, for uh, aircraft, working on aircraft, so I had to, uh, uh, I had to take these, uh, um, what do they call them? Uh, these books that I could get from the station library, mm -hmm. and I had to start reading up on on uh, aircraft engines, mm -hmm. and after I'd reached a certain stage, I took a test, mm -hmm. and I passed the test, and uh, and I got uh, third class aviation machines. But then it wasn't it wasn't until I uh, when we transferred from they when we left Iceland mm -hmm. and went to uh, England. Uh, where I got it, that's when I got a first, uh, first uh, taste of uh, uh, working on an aircraft engine. And, in, and even that, that, that was uh, short-lived because uh, there were enough of the men around who had been, really had experience at it. Uh, they did it and I just kind of uh, stood around and watched and uh, uh, pitched in a little bit here and there. And uh, when we left, I, we, we were stationed in uh, Dunkswell. Dunkswell, uh, Devon, which in uh, England, and uh, we, there was a Liberator base there with these uh, four-engined uh, uh, four-engined bombers, and that's the base where uh, where Joe Kennedy and uh, Joe Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. and his friend uh, took off on their ill-fated flight, oh. flight when the uh, the bomber uh, blew up on them. When did you um, go to England? In uh, the latter part of 43. And do you, uh, what was the re reason why you were sent from Iceland to England, do you know? Uh, not really, no, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, know, I know that uh, I was sent along with, with uh, uh, the group that uh, that I was supposed to have joined mm -hmm. originally in Iceland, they went to England also. What was the name of the group that you were in in Iceland? What unit and what fleet? Uh, it was uh, just a, the fleet air facility. Fleet air facility. And was the Commodore a king? Was he, the, I mean the Admiral, was that king at that time? Uh, he was the Chief of Naval Operations. Chief, yeah, uh, okay. uh, Yeah, Admiral King, right. right. Hmm. Okay. What, uh, just getting back to Iceland, what were your, uh, what was your bunk like, or what did you sleep in, and what was the food we, like? We slept in uh, in uh, Quonset huts. What's a Quonset hut? A Quonset hut is a, uh, it's it's a hut like uh, a, a, a semicircle yeah. uh, made of of a corrugated, the roof roofs yeah. were corrugated steel and yeah. completely insulated, and. Uh, I, it's housed, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there were probably 12 of us mm -hmm. in one of them. And we had, uh, we had oil, oil, oil stoves mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the hut and, we, and vented out. And they were quite comfortable. You know, it could be quite cold up there. Uh, and, and the wind was... Uh, Wow, you hear that wind whistling around there, and it was really something. And uh, on a clear night, uh, you've heard of the Aurora Borealis? Yes. Oh, wow, we saw it almost every night. Oh, it was beautiful. Yes. And how was the food there? Good, yeah. excellent food, yeah. yeah. Great food. When you, uh, when you did go to England, uh, were you, uh, at some point in, in the England, they st the Germans started sending rockets, the V1 and V2 rockets. Mm. We, we were quite a ways away you from that. You were quite a ways, but were you aware yeah. of the rockets? And oh, were yes. You, was it a frightening... We uh, didn't hear them. Right. Uh, we didn't hear them, but we knew it was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Did it seem to be that the war had entered, entered a frightening stage when the Germans were sending rockets? Or? Mm. Well, we, uh, well, we had faith. Right. <laughs> we knew we would come out on top uh, yeah. in the long run. Yeah. Well, that's another thing I was going to ask you about uh, uh, World War II for someone uh, like a lot of us is a different um, we see it differently than, say, Vietnam War. Yeah. How was the morale among the men? No problem. Well, I, I have to tell you that the morale with us is uh, completely different than, uh, than the morale of those fellows that were in the trenches. It was better? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we didn't have to worry about uh, where our next meal mm -hmm. was coming from. Uh, we didn't have to worry about a hand grenade. Or, mm -hmm. Any, any of those things. When you say you had faith, do you mean you had faith? We knew uh, that, that, we, that we were we fighting, would win. that were sure. that we had the military might, or that they were fighting on the morally well, right we side. Well, we had the military might, and right. we also had the uh, we also had the incentive because of uh, uh, which was completely different from uh, Vietnam. Mm. That you that you really were doing something. Oh sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you were in England during uh, the Normandy invasion? Yes. Uh, Operation Neptune, I think it was called, in the Navy? Mm. Well, we weren't involved in it, right? Uh, but uh, we knew it was happening. Yeah. And when did you first hear, that? It, well, how did you first know that we were invading Normandy? Uh, it was in, we got this stuff in the newsletter yeah. that it was going to happen. Yeah. Didn't say when, but or where. it was going to happen, sure. Yeah. Did you feel that that was a, a turning point in the war? Uh, I thought it was very important, yeah. yes. Uh, I have a friend who was, uh, uh, grew up in East Natick with me. He was in, involved in that uh, invasion. Uh, and uh, he came out of it. <laughs> he, he walked away from it, mm -hmm. which a lot of didn't. A lot of them uh, did not. Can you tell? Tell me about your friends who were in the service and what they are, what they ended up doing and what they're doing now. Well, uh, a lot of them. Uh, well, I don't say a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them uh, uh, are no longer alive. Uh, I grew up at the Lulges. Oh yes, yes, they have the liquor store in Route Nine. Yeah, that's the uh, son mm -hmm. of uh, Werner Lulger. He, uh, uh, they had a family. There was one, two, three, four, five of them. Five Lulgers in the Marines. Uh, three of them joined in peacetime before World War II. And then the uh, third one, the fourth one, he, he joined during World War II. And the fifth one, he joined during the Korean War. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Ralph and George, they didn't come back. Uh, Edwin, as a matter of fact, I visited some friends yesterday in New Hampshire who's a cousin of of uh, one of the survivors, and he's out in uh, he's out in uh, South Dakota, and alive and well, he's uh, he's in a uh, he's in a military home uh, with his wife. They've set up an apartment for him, and uh, he's doing quite well. And Werner, the fourth boy, he died he died uh, about a year and a half ago. He came back minus a leg, and the youngest brother, they don't know, they don't know where he is. They don't know where he is. Uh, but uh, that's uh, Howard, Howard McDonald, he, uh, he's out in Arizona, and I have a number of them scattered all over the country, really. Uh, not too many of them have stayed around here for whatever reason. Could you tell me, um, getting back to England, what your day was like in England as a uh, Well, as a we had a uh, short day. Yeah. We were up, uh, we, we were up and in the mess hall at, uh, at uh, 7, and then uh, we were, our, we, we had Nissen huts in England. They were shaped like that almost like a half of an octagon. And what, what, what same, same idea. The corrugated metal? A corrugated metal yeah. roof, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, we would uh, go to the uh, mess hall, and then we'd get in a, a ten and a half truck, mm -hmm. whole pile of us, and bring us down to uh, where our working area was, where we had some airplanes, and we operated uh, uh, we operated uh, two big uh, shift lights in our group. Mm -hmm. uh, which was probably about three, three and a half, three and a half feet diameter, mm -hmm. and uh, every night at a certain time, at a certain hour, we had to light them up, and we'd shush the skies, mm -hmm. and we did that every night. I forgot to ask you if you were married uh, at that time. No, 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 no. Did you have opportunities to date the local girls? Uh, one no, no. I didn't date any local girls. We were, uh, we were about a twenty-minute uh, train ride from the city of Exeter, mm -hmm. and sometimes on weekends we would go, uh, we would go to Exeter, and uh, they'd have a dance hall, and we would we would go to the dance, and uh, and we danced a lot, but I never uh, dated anyone. Mm -hmm. How about the entertainment? For did they bring in movies as well for you? In we England? had good movies. Okay. Good movies, yes. Yeah. Did you leave England before the war ended? Yes. When when were you discharged? Yes, uh, we left. Uh, we left England in uh, in 1944, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I left England and went to was stationed in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. Jacksonville Naval Air Station, okay. and I spent. Uh, uh, several months. That's when I really got to uh, learn what makes an engine, an aircraft engine, tick. Uh, I I got in with this uh, this uh, uh, two-man crew and myself, and we worked on uh, PBYs. What's a PBY? A PBY is a patrol bomber. PB meaning patrol bomber, and the Y is the manufacturer of the plane. And they were amphibious. Mm -hmm. We were we were stationed right alongside the uh, St. John's River. Where was uh, that? That's in Jacksonville. Okay. And the St. John's River, I'm told, it's the only river that flows north. When you were discharged from the army, what was your homecoming Navy. like? I mean, from the Navy. Navy. Sorry, what yeah. was your homecoming like? Well, I I wound up in South Station, and my mother. Yeah. And uh, and. Uh, I had a brother-in-law, two brothers-in-law, and my sisters were there to meet me. Mm -hmm. And, and how, nice. how did your neighbors and friends treat you? Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my, uh, uh, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> what was your like, life like when you returned to Natick? I assume, did you return to Natick? Yes. And, oh, yeah. yeah. To the same, same house. Uh, right. And until uh, I got married in 1950, I stayed in that same house. And uh, my sisters were married. Uh, my two brothers uh, would eventually go into the uh, Korean War. Uh, after, actually, they uh, even yeah after me, I went in, and then they, they followed me. And my youngest brother, he wound up on a uh, on a uh, carrier, the uh, second carrier. What to attack? Mm -hmm. The first one was sunk in World War Two. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, my memory fails uh, me, but I'll, I'll I'll think about it. Yeah. And my other brother, he wound he was up in a he wound up in a field artillery unit in Germany. Uh, but prior to that, uh, I I met uh, come up with some friends uh, from Wellesley, and we uh, did a lot of. Traveling around together, we danced. We went to dances mm -hmm. and Ponce Circle. I went to this old timers dance in in uh, Framingham that they had every Saturday night, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself. What work did you do? I was a machinist. And when you returned, after yeah, you returned, yeah, you were a machinist. Yeah, I, I was a machinist. I worked for uh, uh, Denison Manufacturing Company for a number of years. Yeah. And what did Denison Manufacturing make? Oh, they made paper products, right. all kinds of things. I wanted to ask you um, how you 
uh, why you enlisted for the Korean War and ex your experiences for that? Well, I didn't plan on it, I'll yeah. tell you. Uh, I joined I joined Squanum, the Naval Air Station in Squanum, mm -hmm. simply to, uh, well, it, they paid us for it, mm -hmm. and, simp and to uh, uh, get a little bit a little more experience in in uh, on the Navy engines uh, when we had we had PBYs there also. I'm sorry, what's a PBY? Could you tell me again? Uh, it was a patrol bomber. P okay, patrol bomber. A, a okay. seaplane. Well, sea amphibious, because right. it could land okay. on water and on on land. Okay. <coughs> and uh, about nine nine uh, nineteen. Yeah, 1950. Had to been the uh, summer of 1950. Mm -hmm. I had met a girl at, at a dance in Framingham, and we were going to get married, mm -hmm. probably in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, our skipper uh, volunteered our services. We were called a FASRON. That was a FASRON 915. And that's, uh, uh, that's a, a Fleet Air Service Squadron. And he volunteered our services, so so uh, we had to uh, we updated our wedding, and uh, we were married uh, September third, nineteen fifty, and I left September fifteenth, nineteen fifty. I've heard uh, of people's services being volunteered once they're in the armed services, but to volunteer someone to go into, to go in back into yeah. the service. Was it that cut and dry? I don't know how he got away <laughs> with that. I, I don't understand how he got away with that. But there are some that, uh, there are some that could justifiably back out. And they did. Right. We didn't all go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a, good, a good service did. And uh, in most cases we were married. Yeah. yeah. Now how did you feel about the going into the Korean War? Uh, well, I was kind of disappointed, uh, but uh, I, I, I really didn't mind it because I, ended, I had enjoyed my Navy time in World War II, and I had a pretty good idea, pretty good idea that I wouldn't be going to uh, anywhere uh, in Asia. Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't be wind up anywhere over there. Uh, but we went to, uh, they sent us to Norfolk. Naval Air Station mm -hmm. to uh, to get some training on uh, PBMs. This is a uh, a, a flying boat. Flying boat. It's a, it's more or less a flying boat, twin engine uh, flying boat, a patrol bomber uh, with capabilities of bombing, but it was a uh, big. Uh, uh, big single hull uh, aircraft. So we went to Norfolk to uh, get checked out on the, they were different engines that I'd been used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, and after, uh, after two months down there, then we went to uh, Trinidad, Port of Spain, uh, uh, British West Indies now, in Trinidad. What, what date would you say that was roughly that you uh, went to Trinidad? I'd say we uh, we uh, arrived there uh, arrived there in uh, uh, the first part of December. Of what year? Nineteen fifty. Nineteen fifty. Okay. And what was what was your day like in Trinidad? Well, we had uh, tropical hours. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means we uh, we uh, our day started at seven thirty and. Uh, we were through at 3.30, mm -hmm. unless you had the duty. If you had the duty, then you had to stay aboard the base what 24 does, hours. What does to have the duty mean? That means that, uh, that you, ha uh, you were either on, uh, you know, either, either had to stand watch, I uh, mean walk around. We had, we had a hangar, mm -hmm. a hangar and surrounding buildings that, that were ours, mm -hmm. and we, uh, we had uh, okay. watches at uh, four hours on mm -hmm. and four hours off, 
and it alternated for 24 hours. And if we had enough men so that uh, uh, I really didn't have, I, I don't think I had to stand watch. What was your rank at that time? <coughs> I had made another stripe, right. so I was a, uh, uh, I was an aviation machine in second class. Okay. That's equal to a uh, staff sergeant in the Army. Okay. And what did you do with your free time in Trinidad? Uh, well, we played a lot of softball. Uh -huh. uh, we played uh, touch football, yeah. uh, baseball. Uh, there was a lot of fishing around the base, uh, wonderful fishing, uh, barracuda. Wow. Great, great eating barracuda. <laughs> uh, I, I should add that uh, after about uh, uh, January or the beginning of February, I was able to bring my wife down. Very good. Uh, another sailor and I, he brought his family down and I brought my wife down and we shared a house. Mm -hmm. How did she enjoy it? Loved it. She did? Oh, yeah. She loved it. My wife is an RN, yeah. and, but uh, uh, I don't know if her mother and father uh, tried to talk her into staying or not, but uh, she came down and, uh, and she loved it down there. The weather was beautiful. Oh, that's great. And what, what were your quarters like down there? Uh, we, had a, we had a house. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a house right on, in, in Bayshore, which is a nice section of, uh, of uh, Puerto Spain. And uh, on a good clear day, we could uh, look out our house and we could see the tip of Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And we shared that. We, we, he, my buddy and I, we shared it. Uh, and, but we had separate cooking. My wife cooked for me and his wife cooked for he and they had a, mm -hmm. they had a baby girl. And... Uh, <clears throat> We had a great time. Some people say that, uh, are saying that the Korean War is the forgotten war. And I'm wondering, and when you talk about your, your experiences in service, where the people sort of gloss over Korea and focus on World War II. Uh, yeah, the people don't, uh, people don't think too much of the, the Korean War. How do you feel about the Korean War? Well, uh, you know, I, uh, We, we, we got into something that, well, at least we, we did a little bit more in the Korean War than we did in the, uh, I really upset the way things uh, worked up at the, in the Vietnam War. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask you about that too. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we should have, we should have uh, arrived at a much better solution than we did because now Vietnam is just Vietnam. There's no South, there's no North. and the communists, uh, they, uh, to me at least, they, I think they got the better part of the deal. And we walked out of there with nothing. Right. And the poor Vietnamese uh, that asked us for help, they got, they got nothing either. So I'm sad about that. Yeah. And I'm sad that the, uh, that the uh, people of the country uh, received the uh, Vietnam veterans as badly as they did when they come home. Did and you feel well received after the Korean? Conflict? Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, I didn't, uh, I, I really didn't have anybody say, uh, you shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Uh, n nobody, I never got any flack from anybody. Uh, and I didn't expect any. And we shouldn't have expected any in the Vietnam War either, but uh, yeah. they did. Could you just go over, I know I'm making you backtrack, your rank uh, from beginning to end, from what, what your rank was when you entered and the, roughly the dates. Well, uh, uh, when you entered, you were what? Well, I was, I, I was a seaman, seaman, seaman apprentice yeah. when okay, I joined so the Navy. Seaman, okay. Just and, I, and, and I got, uh, when we uh, received our boot training, after right. the boot training, yeah. we were a seaman second class. Right. And uh, after the machinist made school, Right. I, I wound up as a fireman second class. Fireman, did you say? Fireman second class. Fireman second class, okay. They call them different now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I went to Iceland uh, and, I, uh, and I received that rate there, that was uh, an aviation, aviation machinist third class. 
Machine was third class. Now, now yeah. they call them. That it, it was AMM. Right. The initials. Now they call them ADs. Okay. And, and then I took uh, I took some courses. I was able to take courses at uh, at uh, when I was a station at Squanum mm -hmm. uh, before the Korean War, and I made second class there. Mm -hmm. And that's when they made it. Uh, they they became ADs instead of uh, AMM. So I was an AD second class. AD and AD again stands for uh, aviation machinist. Okay. How they uh, yeah. arrived at okay. that, I don't know, but uh, okay. And from there, did you get a uh, higher? Okay. No. Well, I I did uh, I did take some tests for uh, the higher rate, the first mm -hmm. class, right. uh, but uh, about that time they were getting ready to send me home, mm -hmm. so I didn't take the examination. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with the way the um, the government has treated you as a veteran? Yeah, you are. I have no complaints. That's good. No complaints at all. Because yeah. I was fortunate, where uh, I never had to, uh, uh, I never had to uh, refer to the VA right. for any disability or any injury or anything like that. So. Uh, Knock on, <laughs> knock on wood, I survived that. Are there any experiences uh, in either uh, the World War II or the Korean conflict that I haven't covered that you'd like to let people know for posterity? Well, <laughs> I, there's a, a funny experience I'd in love Iceland. It, yeah. uh, uh, we, we had Marines on the base, mm -hmm. and uh, they were like gatekeepers. Uh, you had to, to get on the base, you had to show a pass mm -hmm. uh, or, or whatever. And uh, one time, I don't know if I should be telling this, but it's, it's funny anyway. Uh, uh, a couple of the Marine, a couple of the fellas uh, got a couple of girls and they got them on the base. And the Marines were involved in this, you understand. Mm -hmm. And they got them down, they took them down to the, uh, the airfield. And, uh, and somebody squealed, and the master at arms, uh, master at arms, he, uh, he went down there and he caught them all, and they sent the girls home, but the, uh, the guys were, uh, uh, had to go before the captain. <laughs> and when they, when the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, skipper there asked him if they wanted to say anything. <laughs> they pleaded insanity. <laughs> <laughs> but they, uh, I think they, they got a week in the brig. Uh, they didn't lose any, uh, they weren't uh, uh, downgraded or anything in their rates, so uh, it turned out well. <laughs> and maybe that was a, that was, maybe it's good they did plead that. <laughs> That, that that was funny. We all got a we all got a big laugh out of that. How about England? Anything remarkable or unusual? Mm, no, no. There was uh, uh, that was uh, relatively quiet, mm -hmm. uh, except for going into town. Well, a friend of mine and I, uh, a buddy, he, he comes from uh, California. Uh, we had a week's leave, so we decided to uh, thumb our way up towards uh, London. Uh, we wound up at, uh, well, just a yeah, hop, skip, and a jump from Stratford-on-Avon, uh, Shakespeare's uh, country. Uh, but nothing exciting happened. We. We we couldn't find a we couldn't find a motel or hotel or whatever to stay, so we we spent the night in this abandoned factory <laughs> on dirty old mattresses and stuff, and then we said let's go home. <laughs> so we went back to the base, where it was more a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> were there any uh, growing up in Natick and going out into the world? Were there any? Things you felt unprepared for when you went to Iceland and Germany. Uh, well, I was certainly uh, I was certainly unprepared for boot camp. I mean, that was rigid. Wow. Uh, and we had a 
we had our uh, chief specialist, who was the young chief from from Texas, and he spoke with this heavy Texas accent, and he really rode us into the ground. But he was very fair, and when we did a good job out on the grinder, that means marching and doing all this stuff, and we kept our barracks clean. Uh, he uh, he was fair by us. We probably had more. Uh, the smoking lamp was lit probably more often for us than uh, any of the other companies around. What does that mean? The smoking, smoking lamp, lamp means you could you could smoke, mm -hmm. but uh, when the smoking lamp was not lit, you did not light up a cigarette. Did you find that there were regional differences uh, between uh, you, northeast soldiers from the northeast and soldiers nope. from the nope. south? No, well, I, I never had a problem. Right. Never had any problem at all. We had uh, we had. Rebels, and we called them rebels, and right. they called us Yankees, yeah. and, and it was good. Uh, I have some, I made some wonderful friends from uh, uh, Kansas. Uh, and they, uh, they had that, uh, they had that uh, rebel accent, and, <laughs> but they were good, they were good people. When you first uh, enlisted, were the blacks still segregated from the whites at that time? Uh, we didn't have a... Uh, or did you not have very many blacks in the Navy? Uh, we had some blacks in the Navy, right. but uh, I had none. We had none in my company yeah. in boot camp. We had none in uh, the machinist mate school that I went to out in Minnesota. Uh, we, we had none, none at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the uh, colored boys that I was involved with, they were either uh, uh, stewards mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, they, they would strike a lot for stewards. Uh, mm -hmm. they, weren't any, uh, they weren't any machinists mm -hmm. or uh, no corpsmen. Uh, so I uh, I didn't run run into any uh, colored people until uh, until the uh, Korean War, mm. and there were and there weren't very many in my outfit even then. But there were uh, several, and they were fun. I got along with them. Mm. I've always got along with colored people. Right. You treat them right, and uh, well, it's like everybody, right. you know, uh, uh, the old golden rule: uh, you treat somebody like you'd like to be treated. Mm. And that was my father and mother's philosophy, and they uh, and my family grew up like that. What would you say were the most difficult things you had to do in the Navy? It sounds as though you had <laughs> sounds as though you took everything in a stride, but uh, no, there were, there wasn't anything. Uh, uh, during my Navy time that I really uh, disliked. Mm. Disliked. I had, when I was stationed at Fargo building before I went to Eng uh, uh, Iceland, uh, I, uh, I had uh, kitchen detail, mess cooking, which in, this, in my particular case, we, uh, we had to get up early and we ate early and then we had to uh, direct the rest of the sailors uh, to sit at certain tables, and uh, when it was all done, uh, we had to clean everything up. We mm -hmm. swept the floors, and then we had to swab the floors. And then we had to wax the floors, <laughs> and uh, but uh, when that work was done, we were through for the day, and that only involved a uh, maybe a, a three-hour day, and we were the time was our own. Mm -hmm. So that was very good, and we. Uh, they treated us good. We ate great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful food there. Were you a good letter writer when you were in the Navy? Well, I wrote my, uh, I wrote my mother quite often. Uh, and uh, every now and then I'd get a letter from my sisters and, uh, and, uh, and I'd, ret I'd return them. But <laughs> in, in uh, England, my oldest sister, she's gone now, but she, vehemently denied it, but uh, she sent me a lemon rank pie. Why would she deny that? <laughs> because it, when I got it, it was a, it was a mess. mess. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I would never do that. I said, Sonia, yes you did. <laughs>
Oh, did you I couldn't find believe it, she would do that. Did you find receiving the letters helped you a lot? Oh, it's wonderful. Look forward to it. Yeah. Wonderful. In, uh, in, uh, in Iceland and in uh, England both, they had the, uh, a, uh, it was an aircraft uh, called the C-54. It was a four-engine, four-engine plane. Mm -hmm. And that was our mail carrier. And every, on a certain day, every week, we could see that thing coming and say, here comes the mail. And that was in Iceland, too, and, and, and in England, too. And uh, that was a great day. Did you do much reading? Read a lot. Yeah. What sort of things did you read? Well, I, uh, I read, uh, I like historical novels. Yeah. Right now, I'm into Westerns. Yeah. Read a lot of Westerns. I do a lot of reading right now when there's yeah. nothing on TV. Yeah. I'll sit down and make who, myself a drink and Who and do you read? read? Uh, huh? Like Zane Grey or the... What, what uh, well, I've read Zane Grey, yeah. I've read uh, uh, Louis L'Amour. Oh yes, that's one. Uh, and uh, McMurtry is, uh, McMurtry mm -hmm. is pretty good. But I like historical novels also. I wanted to ask you, is there anything else that you want people to know or that you'd like to share about your service in the Navy? Or your experiences? Well, uh, well, I can only say uh, there are people that uh, are going in a service that uh, they have a scowl on their face and, uh, and they're going to hate it right from the beginning and you can't go in there with that attitude. Uh, the service is only as good as you make it. You can do wonderful, but you've got to want to do it. If you have, a, if you have an ax to grind or, or something against it, uh, you're not going to do well. You may as well get out. Well, Mr. Harry Seaholm, I want to thank you for your wonderful well, interview and uh, spending your time with us. I enjoyed it. I really it. appreciate it. And I, I loved it myself. I, I enjoyed it very much. Thanks very much.